Hi, I'm PI, brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Lady Ada, what is this week's company and what do they do? And what is the new product introduction of the week this week? Okay, this week's company is Boreas. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, their videos were in French, so it was very hard for me to pick out the name of the company. Um, and uh, they make really cool piezo drivers and stuff, and I've never featured them, so I thought it would be great to have them on this week's. IMPI, I love to feature new and small companies um, as well. So this week we're talking about the 1931 um, from Boreas. It is a very impressively powerful and complete piezo haptic driver. Um, there's also a pump driver, I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so, you know, piezos are um, these discs that you can put voltages across and they'll give you mechanical movement or you can give them mechanical movement and they'll give you um, a voltage, the uh, current um, generation. Um, they're very thin and they're very inexpensive and, you know, often they're used as like piezo beepers and stuff. But uh, you can also use them as haptic drivers because they will, you know, if you, if you think about it, like if you put an AC waveform that is, um, audio frequency, you hear it, but it's also, you could have it mechanically move. So, um, I've seen pieces used for like, um, uh, moving lenses or, or, or samples, uh, for little pumps, microfluidics. Um, like I said, they're very small, but they do have a couple of weird things about them that requires you to have a, a driver. You can't, it's not, it's not trivial to set them up and get them going. Um, so, this chip, and what's nice about it is there's two versions. There's a 21 and the 31. And um, the 21 has the ability to do reading. But otherwise, what's really cool about it is not only does it have a boost converter, it also has this waveform generator and the driver. And like the waveform generator is, is like a full sequencer. Um, so no matter what you need to do with your piezo, um, this chip is going to help you do it and offload a lot of the work of making a waveform that the piezo you're using will like. Um, so you can get it to do what you uh, want it to do. In this case, it has like a FIFO or it has a waveform generator. Uh, it also has the boost converter built in, which is neat. So if you see at the bottom there, the supply voltage is 3 to 5.5 volts. But then if you look at the top, the voltage that it can generate is 110 max. It's actually 90 volts is what they recommend. And then it will do the differential drive for you. So you actually get plus or minus about 200 volts. Um, across a piezo, which is a lot. You can you can really drive a piezo very hard at 200 volts as long as it's rated for that, um, which reminds me, don't forget to, if you're doing that, get a piezo that's rated for that voltage peak to peak. Um, here's some piezos, you know, I just searched for piezo on DigiKey. They have, you know, thousands of different variants and sizes. A lot of them are like, they're meant for audio. So they're like, you know, maybe 5, 10, 15, 30 volt peak to peak. Um, but in specific, this chip seems to be designed um, not only for, but one of the big use cases is for piezoelectric micro pumps, which I was like, I've never heard of active cooling with piezos. Um, but what it's used for is stuff like phones. Like remember two weeks ago, we talked about, um, using, uh, Peltiers, which are, yeah. you know, a thin way of, of making a coolant, like heating stuff is easy. Cooling stuff is kind of hard. Um, but you need a gigantic heat sink. You have to get the heat away from. Um, the hot surface of the because it doesn't differential it doesn't it's not just like reduce an inch pre yeah. inch pre ain't easy it's not and uh, while well, you're just moving it around and uh -huh. um, you know you can't necessarily put a fan in thin devices like a phone but you know the process is really getting so powerful that you do need to get the heat away and sometimes the case isn't you know it's it's not the metal in the case isn't good enough to uh, get heat away so you actually use a piezo disc that yellow and silver thing and it acts like a pump. You make, you know, it's a very small pump, but you don't need to have a lot of liquid. You just have to move it consistently. Um, and by vibrating the disc up and down, you're, you're, you can move the fluid um, around the back of the phone. So, the, I mean, I, it seems like it's be used in one or two phones, um, like a Huawei phone and another phone. I couldn't quite figure out exactly what phone uses this technology. But I think there's other use cases. Like, again, I've, I've heard of people doing microfluidics where you want to move small amounts of liquid around, you need a pump. Um, this pump is extremely thin and small compared to an electromagnetic based pump. Okay. Um, as mentioned, there's two versions. There's the 21 and the 31. The 21 is uh, bi-directional. So not only is it an actuator, but it's also a sensor. So it'll detect presses and um, uh, presses and like vibrations and stuff. Um, because like I said, piezos work both ways. They can generate electrical um, output, you can generate 
charge from a mechanical movement or mechanical movement from charge motion. Uh, in this case, this chip can do both. The 21, the 31 only does one direction. Um, yeah, so if you like the 1921 can only do actuator settings, but you know, if you want to have it, you know, what's interesting is if you are using this pump in a phone, I wonder if you could also use it as like a sensor for detecting if the pump is working or maybe if the phone is being tapped. Okay, there's some interesting stuff there. Again, it doesn't have to use for that pump usage, but it seems to be like one of the um, requested or, you know, the one of the customers requested it. Um, usage is actually pretty simple. You've got the load. What's nice is it's a direct drive. You don't need to have any like driving H bridge or transistors. Um, there's a mini pump, the C pump. Um, that's just, I think, to create a five volt input. And then there's the boost converter. So you do need an inductor uh, to generate the output voltage, which like I mentioned, you can configure it to be you know up to 90 volts. And then um, you can control the whole thing from I3C or I2C. We covered I3C before. It is back compatible with I2C. So if you don't have I3C support, don't worry about it, you can use I2C. Um, to drive the piezos like other haptic devices, you'll want to use different waveforms to create different like effects. You have people who use ERAs and LRAs, you know, there's like there's like hard click, soft click, and like ramp up, ramp down. You have to create these waveforms um, and you don't want to do it in real time because you just kind of want to tell the chip, hey, create this like click waveform and let the main processor go back to doing its thing. There's a FIFO, you can like have a customized waveform if you want to like do, you know, byte by byte sample generation. There also seems to be like an a sine wave envelope generator. So you can say, look, I just want you to do a sine wave and then I'm going to tell you the amplitude um, because you do need to give piezos sine um, waves. Like you can't, it's not a DC voltage, it's it's an AC voltage. And um, there's also like this kind of cool like waveform generator where you can take different slices of sine chunks and cosine chunks, and then you can combine them together in like, you know, like sync pulses-ish looking things or like sign envelopes. And then you can use the different um, blocks and, and like paste them together to create waveforms. So if you don't want to, you know, fill that FIFO buffer with every single byte of the waveform and you're like, well, I basically want, you know, a gentle slope up and slope down of like a sign type way, whatever. Here you go. Um, you can basically like patch together all of these waveforms and, and send to the chip and tell it, it'll just like go and do it. And if you're like, this sounds very confusing, don't worry, there's Haptic Studio. So you can um, go there and you can kind of, you know, use their tool and it'll tell you the I squared C commands um, to generate the waveforms you want. Haptic Studio um, should be the name of a place that you go and get fit. I know. Stuff like that. I want to like work out at Haptic Studios. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. And wave playback. Yes, they can do like repeat and like you can do all these. I mean, it's like a very advanced like data sheet. I started reading about this and I was already like, okay, I'm spending like an hour just reading about how to do the waveform generation. Basically, here's the thing. Any waveform you want, you can generate it. No question. Great. Um, comes in two packages. There's the QFN. I don't believe the QFN the 31 is available yet, but it's probably coming soon. The QFN, easier to solder, but bigger. Or you can go with the BGA, the WLCSP, much smaller, very much more compact, good for tiny wearables um, like watches or phones or whatnot. Um, but of course, it's you know, going to need a four layer board with uh, plug vias for it. Either way, it is a boost converter, so you can't just like slap down the parts wherever you want. You do have to kind of obey the layout to make sure that, you know, if you're going for, um, you know, plus minus, you know, 90 volts into the piezo, um, that's a lot of voltage that you're generating from like, you know, three volts or 3.7 volts. You want to make sure that you have good efficiency. Um, so follow their layout uh, recommendations. Um, as you can see, QFN is a little easier to lay out. Um, but you'll get half the size if you use the BGA. Either way, the inductor will, and the output capacitor are gonna be a little bit big. Um, not much you can do about that. If you wanna get started immediately, there's a valve boards in stock for the 920, 1921, uh, which you can use with that uh, haptic studio while you get fit. And the chip itself is in stock at DigiKey. Um, really cool. I, I'm, you know, we have a haptic driver, but not, of course not as complicated as this. Um, but I think I've seen a lot of people in like science, medical, like high tech stuff. You're dealing with small things. They use piezos a lot. 
to, to move stuff or adjust things um, because they're so sensitive compared to electromagnetic, um, haptic, or sensing devices. So uh, check out this ship as a driver. It kind of does everything for you. Okay. Thanks, Boreas. That's I on NPI. I on NPI.